Okay, so here a tutorial on some of the features, the way it sounds like, are up and coming into Ink Stitch. And I like to give credit to, I don't know how to pronounce that name, but uh, they do a lot of work in behind the scenes. And this tutorial is about creating uh, different patterns, different fill patterns. As you can see here in the leaf, there's different patterns inside the leaf, and that is, and here you can see also there's a, a line going in there. These things are all going to be possible and are possible to create. And in order to do that, uh, what we'll do, go and do is, I'll move this out of the way now, but uh, they do a lot of work in behind the scene to make ink stitch better and the way it sounds like they're working hard on it. So I'd like to give him, give that person the credit for uh, me being able to create this video with the information they have given. So what I did is I created a square here. Uh, just draw it with a Bezier tool. Then what we want to do is select it. We go extension, ink stitch, and we go to the params. And in the params, uh, we, I will turn off oh, uh, autofill. We turn off the underpath, and what I did is uh, the maximum filled stitch length. We want to. Uh, what I did is set it bigger than what my shape is and stagger the rows this many times before repeating. I gave that also a big number. So what you get is, uh, let's see, I'll do a restart here. So basically what is happening now is it will stitch from one side, you get one stitch from one side to the other side. So, and then what you want to do is uh, you go and apply and quit. Then what needs to be done is go file and save us. And we will have to go and save it as an embroidery file. Once it is saved as an embroidery file, I will cancel it because I loaded the embroidery file in this file already too for the demonstration. So this is the embroidery file. What I then import it back into Inkscape. Then what we do is we go and create the pattern we want. We can have a pattern pre-created. Uh, you can create it as you go. Uh, there are many possibilities. Uh, you can also create your own pattern and save them in a separate file and then copy and paste it into the file you're working on. But in order to create one here, I will go and use my Bezier tool. What I did is I set up a grid for accommodating creating my pattern. And in order to do that, you go to File, document properties and then it will open up here on the page then you go to the guides there you can set your colors 
and then your grid you want to set your grid to whatever spacing you prefer so the uh, the bigger the pattern you want the bigger the spacing and the smaller then you just decrease this number and then you can just close out on it so that is where the grid comes from now I will go and or I should go and show you on the design here there is one little issue yet it did not clear all my nodes so I will zoom in really close and I want to clean out these nodes here so I'm drawing around these nodes so that my pattern is completely clear of all the nodes. Uh, you will see this looks a little different but th those are just the handles so that will not will not matter and this side everything looks clear so now the whole shape we are working on is oh it looks like there is a is a node what we want to get rid of and there okay now the whole inside of the pattern is cleared of all all the nodes so now what we want to do is we want to create our pattern we want to create inside the shape so what I'm doing is uh, I'll create oh, snapping turn snapping on let's uh, undo for a moment make sure that we are following the the snapping so now we start creating a pattern and as you can see we get the X marks that is because of the snapping so we get a consistent shape all this there are different ways of creating these patterns uh, do whatever you prefer and I'll quickly continue here a few lines and once we have the pattern created then the fun starts you want to make sure that you cover it far enough because I'm I'm gonna go and rotate it because the way it is now uh, the stitching is horizontally so for our pattern if we want to create a nice pattern we don't want that the lines are really going in the same direction so in order to create the different direction we'll go and make it a little bigger and then we will rotate in a moment okay that's where I'll so there I created a path what we are going to be using as a pattern now I will go and select it and I will go and rotate it I'll turn snapping off so I can line it up to where I want it and as you can see uh, some of the the corners uh, I should have drawn more more lines in there that still can be added but f let's just leave it at this for now and so now we can line it up 
to if we say hey we want to have this line and that line in in the corners then we can go and line that up exactly and as you can see uh, and then we want to line up that so that everything is a little equal but yeah we should have I should have had it taller so I would also cover this area for a pattern but I'm not gonna bother with that right now so then what we do is we have this selected and then shift uh, shift select the embroidery file then what we want to do is path cut path and then the whole design is being split up in lots of lots of different paths because each embroidery line is split up in multiple paths then what we want to do is we go to the node select tool and as you can see there are all the nodes then what we do is we select all the nodes and we go and join selected nodes and then uh, doesn't seem like it is working because I should okay there we go it takes a little bit of time for it to work because as you can see now in my object panel I only have two paths again so all my nodes are now combined then what we do is we select it and then we go extension ink stitch we go to the params again and if you open the params you will get that it is trying to create all six hex stitches but that is the satin stitch along path so we don't want that then then we have to change it to the manual stitch placement and then we'll go and that should all be good then we go apply and quit then what we'll do is we'll go to the extension ink stitch troubleshoot no uh, visualize and export go to the simulator for a moment and we'll speed it up for a moment and now we go and have a look at a realistic view and there you can see there we have a pattern created in a shape so and this can be done uh, really well with uh, satin stitches you can also draw a single line through there you can go and create uh, sp split satin and you can create uh, any kind of pattern in there whatever you can think of and that is all up to you by doing this this principle okay thanks for watching and have fun creating and experience play with it and once you get the hang of it uh, it can become a lot of fun creating uh, new designs in your embroidery okay thanks for watching